Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Gomez. Welcome to our reading and spelling adventure. Together, we're gonna learn all about letters, the sounds they make, and some cool tricks to help you become a better reader and speller. We're gonna practice new words, fun sounds, and even use mirrors to see how we make each sound. So go ahead, grab your notebook, get your pencil, and get your mirror and get ready to learn. See you inside the lesson. We are going to review 14 contractions that we already know. Remember, a contraction is two words that have been made into one word, and the apostrophe means that some letters have been taken out. In English, we have lots of contractions. So say the two words and the contraction with me. What is what that is that he is he's I am I'm who is whose there is theirs here is here's it is it's where is where's she is she's let us let's cannot can't do not don't now it's time for us to learn two more contractions this one says should not shouldn't say it two times with me should not shouldn't should not shouldn't very good and our very last one today would not wouldn't say it two times with me would not wouldn't would not wouldn't We are going to review every letter and its sounds that we have learned so far in our program. There's a lot. Say them with me. In, nine, n. In, sink, n. Digraph, n, g. Ring, n. I, itch, i. I, I, I T tomato t. D dog d H hat O olive ah O O O S salad s. S rose z L lemon l F fire G game g K kid k P pig p A apple a a, A, A. C, cat, k. Okay, go ahead and take out your paper. Take out your pencil. And let's write our numbers 1 through 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. We have fifteen sounds that we have learned. So look at my mouth, repeat the sound after me, name the letter that makes that sound, and then write the letter. Number one, S, S, 
final position S S S final position S S two Z S voiced three Ng Diagraph N G comma N Diagraph N G comma N Number four N N Five F Six G G seven L eight T T number nine K K comma C Ten H eleven P, P. twelve I, I. thirteen R O Fourteen, ah, a, a, fifteen, d, d, good job. How many ways can the sound ng be spelled? Right, two is digraph N G and N. Let me write that down. So when we hear the N sound, we have two choices. It could be digraph N G or it could be N. Let me underline digraph N G here. If we have two ways to spell the same sound, we need to learn a spelling rule. Watch as I write these words on the board. R I N G S A N G Now look at this first column. Listen as I pronounce these words. Ring sang Where are you hearing the ng sound? Right, you're hearing it in the final position. We're hearing a final ng sound. Remember, these parentheses are the shape of our ears. That's the sound we're hearing. Now, how am I, am I spelling final ng? Right, I'm spelling it with digraph ng. So the final ng is being spelt with digraph ng. I'm gonna write down some more words. S I N K S P A N K. Listen as I read these words Sink, Spank. Where are you hearing the ng sound? Right, you're hearing it in the medial position. Now, what letter is producing that ng sound? It's that N. So that medial, M stands for medial. Ng, that's the sound we hear. It's the shape of our ears. The medial ng is making a N, is being made by that N. That letter N is making the ng sound. What 
sound is coming after the ng sound. Sink, spank, right, it's a k sound. So anytime, let me write down k for k. Now remember, we have two letters that can make a k sound. It could also be a c or a k. So let me put that in parentheses so you know that's the sound. That's not the letter. That's the sound we're hearing. And this means before. So anytime you have a medial ng that is coming before a k sound, you're going to spell it with an n. One more time. Medial ng before k is spelt with n. That is our new rule. So when you hear ng, you know you have two choices. Diagraph ng or n. Okay? So if you hear the final ng, you are going to spell it with diagraph ng as in ring. Now let's say I have more than one ring and I want to add an S to it. Rings. Now that S is not included in the final sound because it is a suffix. So when I say final sound, it means the final sound of a base word, a complete English word. Okay? A medial ng before k is spelled with n. So if you hear a word that, has, that ends with k right before it, k, and you hear a ng, you know that's going to be an n because it's in the medial position. Our example is as in sink. We're going to practice that today in our application, how to spell some more words. Today, I'm going to write two words down. Watch me as I write them. S-I-N. S-I-N-K. Listen as I read the first word. Sin. What is the sound of the N? N. The sound is N. Your tongue is at the top of the mouth behind your front teeth. N. Now listen as I read the second word. Sink. What is the sound of the N? Mm. The sound is ng. Mm. Your tongue is further back in your mouth. It's like you're holding a ball in your mouth. Mm. What sound do you hear after the ng mm sound? Right, a k. The letter n is always, always pronounced n mm, except in front of a k sound or a g sound. In that situation, n is pronounced ng. To help us remember that n makes the sound, we will code it with a g curve. We are going to code some words and read them today, but let's review our code marks. Coding helps us to decipher words so we can read them correctly. We are practicing our code marks so they can get into our long-term memory. So in the future, we don't have to use them every time we come across a word. But right now, we're learning how to read fluently, so we're going to use them. Remember, if we have a suffix, we are going to circle our suffixes. And remember, S has two sounds. It can be a S sound, or a z sound, depending on the letter that comes in front of it. If it's unvoiced, then S is unvoiced. S. If it's voiced, then S is voiced. Z. Also, we have vowels. If we have a vowel and a closed syllable, it's short. We're going to code it with a brief. That's going to be short vowel sound. If we see a vowel in an open accented syllable, we're going to code it with a macron, and it's going to say the name of the letter. That's the long vowel sound. If we see diagraph NG, we're going to underline it to keep that together. 
If we see two light constants side by side, we mark one out, its sound will hide. If we see the letter C, the sound we're gonna produce now for it is K, it's borrowing its sound from the letter K. So we're gonna put a K back on it. And if we see an N that comes right before <clears throat> a cuss sound, we are going to put that G curve on it. Go ahead, take out your paper, take out your pencil, number one through four. We are going to code and read four words. One, two, three, and four. <clears throat> number one is K, I, N, G, S. K, I, N, G, S. Now, coding is gonna help us to read it correctly. Let's look, do we have any suffixes here? Yes, we have suffix S. So let's circle our suffix S. We know suffix S can have two sounds depending on the letter that's in front of it. What letter do you see in front of it? Oh, you're smart. You already see that digraph NG right there. So let's go ahead and underline digraph NG. What is the sound of digraph NG? Touch your throat. Mm, is it vibrating? Yes, so that means the S is going to vibrate. So let's put that voice line on it. Now let's find our vowel. Which letter here is a vowel? Right, the I. A vowel, is it enclosed or open? Right, it's closed syllable because of those consonants. A vowel enclosed syllable short, code it with a breathe. What is the sound of short vowel I? Right, I. Okay, we already found digraph NG. We have no two light -like consonants. We have no C. We have no N before a sound. Can you read that word? Kings. Very good. Let's go ahead to number two. T O N G. T O N G. Okay, any suffixes here? No. A vowel? Of course, what letter? Good, the O. Is it in a closed syllable or open? Right, so a vowel in closed syllable short, code it with a breathe. What is the sound of short vowel O? Ah, very good. Do we have any digraphs? Yeah, we have digraph NG. Let's underline that so we know that sound site stays together. What's the sound of digraph NG? Mm, very good. Any two like consonants? Any C's? An N before a K sound? No. Can you read that word? Very good. Tongue. Let's go to number three. S T I N K. S T I N K. Any suffixes? No. A vowel? Yes. And what letter? Yeah, the I. Closed syllable or open? Closed. Vowel and closed syllable short, code it with a brie. What is the sound of short vowel I? Eh, very good. Any digraph NGs there in this word? No. Two like consonants side by side? No. What about a C? No. What about an N before K sound? Oh yeah, we do. So an N before K sound, is going to have a G curve. What sound does N before K? What sound does it make? Mm. Can you read that word? Stink. Very good. And our last word, number four, write this down. S-P-A-N-K. S-P-A-N-K. Oh, I'm gonna make it a little bit harder. Put an S at the end. S P A N K S. Okay, any suffixes? Of course. What letter? Oh, yeah, the S. Okay, now we know suffix S can have two sounds, so go before it and make the sound of K and touch your throat. K, K. Is it vibrating? No. So that means S is going to have what sound? S. Okay. Where's our vowel here? 
Right, it's the A. Close syllable or open? Right, close vowel and close syllable short. Code it with a breathe. What is the sound of short vowel A? Ah, good job. Do we have digraph NG here? No. Any two like consonants side by side? No. A letter C here? No. An N before a K sound? Oh yeah, we do. It's right here. N before K. Mm, we need to code that with a G curve because the N before K, what sound does it make? Mm, very good. Can you read that word? Spanx, very good. That word was kind of tricky. Some of you might wanted to code that S, but remember, initial S always says S, so we don't need to code that. We always know it's gonna make the S sound. Nice job coding and reading. Okay, take out your paper and your pencil. We are going to spell six things today. So number one through six. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We're spelling six things today. And today in our new learning, we learned that the final ng is spelled digraph ng as in ring, but medial ng before k is spelled n as in sink. Okay, number one, repeat this sound. Name the letters that makes the sound, and we're going to write them. Number one. Ng, digraph ng, comma, n. Digraph ng, comma, n. Number two, it's another sound. Repeat the sound, name the letters that make that sound. K, K comma, c. K comma, c. Number three, we're going to spell a word. Repeat this word after me. Sting. Okay, let's make a line for every sound. S, T, I, ng. We hear four sounds. How am I going to write the S? S, T, T, I, I, ng. Okay, we have two choices. We have digraph ng and an n. What position are we hearing that ng in? Sting, final. So final ng is going to be spelled right, digraph ng. Can you read that word? Sting, very good. Let's go to number four. The word is pink. Repeat that word. Okay, let's write a line for every sound we hear. We have a p, i, n, k. We have four sounds. What's a p? P. What's a i? I. What's a n? Okay, I hear different answers. Our last sound was a k. How are we spelling this k? Wow, we have two choices. Let me give you a hint. It's gonna be k until I, tell, until I teach you how, which one to use. Okay, do we learn that spelling rule? Let's put our k here. So we have a m mm before a k, which is spelled k. And the ung is in the medial position. Remember, this is initial, this is final. Anything between initial and final is called medial. So all of this is medial. So we have a medial ng before a k is going to be spelled with what letter? Right, the n. Can you read that word? Good, pink. Number five is songs. Repeat that word. A line for every sound we hear. S, ong, 
songs. Very good. Wow, we got four sounds we're hearing. What's a s? Very good. What's a ah? Uh, oh. And then we have a ng. And then we have a z songs. What is what is the songs? What do you think this ng sound is? If you said digraph ng, you're correct. Because a z is a suffix. And remember, when you're looking at medial and final sounds, you're doing it without the suffix added. We know that songs, the only sound right now producing a z sound would be s. That's a voice s sound. So this is a suffix. So song, the ng is in the final position. So final ng is going to be spelled with digraph ng. Read that word. Songs. Now, number six, our last word. Stinks. Repeat that word. Okay, let's write a line for every sound. S t i n x. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six sounds. Okay, let's start with the very first one. S s t t i i n. Okay, before we make our decision, let's hear that next sound. K. Okay, so what is this going to be? Right, it's going to be an N. We're hearing it in the medial position. Medial is anything between initial and final, so this is the medial position. So we said when we have a medial N before K sound, we're going to spell it with an N, so that's right. And we still haven't learned the rule between to use K and C. So everything today is going to be K. So here we go. So let's put that K for the K. Stinks. Our suffix is. Read that word. Stinks. Good job. Let's review all the concepts we have learned so far in our series. Initial means first, final means last, medial means anything between initial and final. Final ng is spelled digraph ng as in ring. Medial ng before k is spelled in as in sink. This is the floss rule. In a one-syllable base word with a short vowel sound ending in th is spelled FF -f, as in sniff. Ending in L is spelled LL -l, as in hill. And ending in S is spelled SS as in pass. Final SS is pronounced S as in pass. The asterisk means this is a nonsense word. This is not a real word. The letter A in an open accent syllable is long, coated with a macron. This is the long vowel sound. A long vowel sound is the name of the letter. This nonsense word is pronounced pay. English words do not end with I. The asterisk means this is a nonsense word. It is not a real word. We have only two words in English that ends with I, and of course it's I, meaning myself, and, it's a sh and another one is a short version of hello, hi. Otherwise, if it ends with I, it's not from the English language. When a syllable is accented, the voice is louder, longer, and stronger. In English, the first syllable is usually accented. If a syllable ends with a consonant, it's called a closed syllable because consonants are closed sounds. If a syllable ends with a vowel, it's called an open syllable because vowels are open sounds. Great job today, everyone. We learned something new and practiced together. 
Remember, each step you take brings you closer to becoming an amazing reader and writer. Keep practicing at home, review the videos, and just keep practicing. I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, keep exploring, keep practicing, and never stop learning. See you soon.